sorry to get you the late notice. Okay, it's you okay. Could, you could My team it. was here. Yep, that's right. Thank you. Uh, just very quickly, uh, I don't have uh, long remarks or anything like that. Happy to take a question or two after. Uh, on Tuesday, November 8th, we held an election and the people of Maine's 2nd Congressional District came out to vote in strong numbers with more than 300,000 people casting their ballot. Now with 95% of votes counted, it's clear that my campaign has e exited election day with a commanding lead of more than 11,000 votes and nearly 4% of the vote, uh, a lead of nearly 4% of the vote. As a result, the Bangor Daily News yesterday reported that our campaign's victory is all but assured. I'm deeply honored that the people of Maine's 2nd District have chosen me to represent them in Washington for another two-year term. Although Bruce Poliquin is not yet willing to concede, at this point the final result is undeniably clear. The few precincts that remain cannot meaning, meaningfully alter the position of this race. In an instant runoff uh, against Bruce Poliquin, we are very confident that our lead will hold uh, and even likely extend by a comfortable margin. I have confidence in the Maine Secretary of State's office to complete a secure process in the coming days. Standing before you today, I want to say thank you. I'm humbled by the strong support that I've received in this election, and I'm honored to be able to continue serving the people of Maine's 2nd Congressional District in the next Congress. I'm proud of the positive, principled campaign we ran, and I want to thank my campaign staff for the incredible work that they put into this re-election effort. Each of you has brought forward amazing energy and skill and contributed greatly to Tuesday's result. I want to give a special thanks to my campaign manager, Margaret Reynolds, for her incredible work Margaret. ethic. <laughs> I also want to thank my congressional staff for their hard work day in and day out on behalf of our constituents. For four years now, you've offered the people of Maine's 2nd District your very best service and representation and you have made an incredible positive difference in the lives of many thousands of people. To those of you who volunteered for and supported my re-election campaign, I am deeply grateful. Your confidence in me and my team and your commitment to our democratic process are an inspiration. Thank you for being a critical part of this effort. Finally, I want to thank my wife Isabel and my daughter Rosemary for your love and support and your patience, as well as for the many sacrifices you make as I serve our community in Washington. Izzy and I also offer our thanks to all of our family and friends for their love and support. And we uh, want them to know we absolutely couldn't do this without them. Uh, to the people of Maine's 2nd Congressional District, it's been an honor to represent you. I'm humbled by your continued support and pledge to continue to make your best interests my singular focus. Uh, thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions. Nick, uh, Nick has the run of the show, and at some point he's going to cut you off and give me the hook. Yeah, uh, Congressman, um, you seem to carry the idea that you're not the average politician. It seems to be not the average campaign. Is that an accurate statement? Can you comment on that? I think I'm just a regular guy like anyone else who's doing the best I can to represent the district. So take, take whatever you want out of that, I guess. But It seems you did well um, in the cities. Was that a goal of yours, and um, do you think that message know you were putting out there proved to uh, people on the contrary I think we've always prided ourselves on focusing on rural areas uh, it's not that we don't care about uh, Lewis and I live here uh, but uh, no we focus everywhere on everyone and uh, you know I think we've always uh, put a, a strong focus on getting out into rural communities uh, to have uh, you know, good conversations with what looks to be like a uh, Republican lead in the US House um, by a small number I think when the margins are narrow, everyone is in a position to have influence. We've, we've tried to play an important role in the last two years with, with tight margins, uh, and it'll be no different uh, in, in the next Congress. So, uh, you know, Prior to this uh, current term, I've always served in a divided government you know, for four years in the main legislature. It was Democratic uh, control of the House and Republican control of the Senate. Uh, so this isn't an unusual situation for me, and uh, one that I will, uh, uh, I think, actually uh, be very excited to be a part of. Uh, 
working across the aisle really important to me. Uh, I've worked hard for uh, a number of years to form good relationships with some of my Republican colleagues and with tight margins, uh, should they have control of the House or not. Uh, I think that we're going to have uh, an important role to play together. Your record was a central issue in this re-election campaign. You defended it, Mr. Pollack, and the other comments about it. What issues do you think actually resonated the most in your record or what was out there this year, including, obviously, the abortion issue? I, I think, Phil, that people went out and, and voted based uh, upon uh, you know, who I am, the way I've done the job, uh, and the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the uh, kind of transparency and communication uh, of our operation over a couple of years now, uh, despite millions of dollars uh, of ads trying to uh, nationalize the race, trying to convince people uh, that I am something other than myself uh, and that my record was not uh, what it actually is. Um, I think people saw right through that, Phil. So uh, I, I think that most elections are actually uh, about the individuals uh, rather than uh, about any one you know, singular issue or uh, certainly not about uh, the ad war. Uh, Is there a lesson nationally for Democrats looking at your apparent re-election and other similar um, Democrats, you know, with Spanberger and all of the, the problem solver caucus, the uh, for country caucus type of Democrats who won yesterday? I hesitate to, to try and compare myself to anyone uh, around the country and uh, people I always know the saying that all politics is local. So what what applies here, not not necessarily, uh, you know what what's going to determine an, an outcome half halfway across the country or you know in another state, Phil. So I, there's not much I can extrapolate for you there. I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. Have you had any contact with Bruce Paul, Bruce Baldwin since election night? No. Is it necessary that he concede? I mean, it's not required, of course. And I guess technically the election's not over. Not at all necessary. That's his choice. One more question, folks. I'll throw one out. Uh, following up the question, uh, obviously you did win Lewiston, Auburn. I think you won Bangor. But can you talk a little bit more about the inroads in um, some of the rural towns like Eustace and Jay and places where you either narrowed his margin or won towns that Paul LePage won that Janet Mills didn't win? What happened? We won Jay this election, we won Jay in 20, we won Jay in 18, same for Rumford. There's a number of towns that we've uh, consistently uh, outperformed uh, the party, uh, outperformed the top of the ticket. Uh, and again, I think that speaks to uh, the work that my staff and I have put into getting out into those communities. Uh, first on the campaign side in 18, in the last four years, we've been all over the district, Phil. We've worked hard to try and um, you know, meet people where they're at uh, and communicate to them what we're working on uh, and listen to them. Um, in fact, I kicked off my first four years in office with, with a you know, months-long listening tour uh, where we uh, aggressively got all over the district. So um, I, I just think that uh, that's been the trend. Uh, we've held on to those uh, towns when some Democrats um, who used to represent them have lost. Uh, or, as you've said, we've, we've made inroads over the last uh, several election cycles, uh, picking up more support uh, in rural communities. I saw Eustace was one that we uh, won. Um, I was happy to see that, proud of that. And, um, you know, Kingfield is an example. Um, showing up is important. Uh, we went to the Kingfield home days this summer, Phil. Uh, some people thought I should be, uh, you know, in another community uh, at a bigger festival, but I thought it was important to show up in a different one. Um, you know, a smaller community to show them that they're important to me too. So I can't be everywhere at once, but I try to be, uh, you know, as, as many places as I, as I can be as, as frequently as possible. And I think it, it shows with the outcome here. Thanks for coming, everybody. Here we're going to have a